meet you, Bob. Hello, this is Barbara. Barbara. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Ladies? Nancy. Hello. Better known as Bear. Yes, sir. And it's a pleasure to see you here. It's a pleasure being here. The guy's really throwing out a wild sound. Thank you. And like a lot of groups today, uh, you come up with a, an unusual name, Canned Heat. Where did that, um, where did you get the <laughs> name? Canned Heat came from a uh, title of an old phonograph record made around 1929 by Tommy Johnson. They used to drink Canned Heat. Back to <laughs> <laughs> right. That's Prohibition days? Yeah, back to when you couldn't get booze, you couldn't get anything else. You just strain it down through a loaf of bread and drink it up. Give you a little buzz. <laughs> <laughs> I would guess it would. Now, <laughs> not the top of your head off is what it would do. <laughs> Well, uh, you mentioned uh, the old record, which reminds me that um, I'm something of a collector of 78s, and I really? understand you have one of the really great collections. Well, it's not that great. It's about 15,000 strong. Only 15,000. Oh. <laughs> and that's oh, just it's... mine. There's Alan's got a couple thousand, and Henry's got about 5,000. So there's... there's a nostalgia related to those records. Even when they repress the things on LP, I think it loses something. Oh, it loses a lot. There's a lot of fun to watch the original label spinning around. And yes, <laughs> a little faster. Kind of makes it stiff a little bit. Brings back great waves of nostalgia. Well, right. Now, uh, with a collection that size, you must really be an authority on some of the really important milestones in Mild. early recording. It depends on what you're talking about. Like, I can rattle off things like Bing Crosby made 52 Brunswick records in his career. Four of them were 12 inch records. Uh, I think it's important to know those things. RCA Victor had the uh, patent on the eccentric runoff groove. Wouldn't let anybody use it until 1936. Just a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really make any sense, but when you're really into records and you really get into that scene, willing to travel thousands of miles to go through junk shops, antique stores, knock on doors, or do whatever to get them, it's it, the fever. It sounds like, as a matter of fact, it sounds like the recording industry has its own area of trivia, just like uh, oh, it's incredible. films. and it's incredible. It's incredible. Well, well, if we get out of your way... Uh... Yes, room, canned heat.
you, baby, hanging up on my shit. seinen Pass verloren und konnte deshalb nicht rechtzeitig hier sein. Can't eat mit A Long Way From L.A. City.
drivers grow That have a contrary woman That I can't control Just remember, darling Got to be just what you sow
good to see so many people come out to hear the blues. You know, it really does. Because I don't know whether you really know it or not, but if it wasn't for the blues and country and western music, there wouldn't be no music. And our whole goal of playing this kind of music is to try and keep it alive. that happen. Ever. Not ever. Been with it too long. Why now we're going to start this off with a little country guitar.
again. Number 15, man. Read it. Together, come on, come on, let's work together. Now, now, people, because together we will stand every boy, girl, woman, and a man. Well, now, now, two or three minutes, two or three hours, what does it matter now if disciples are just work together? Come on, come on, let's work together. Ah, because together we will stand every boy, girl, woman, and a man. Well, now, now, make someone happy, make someone sad together, and make life work together. Come on, come on, let's work together. Now, now, people, you know together we will stand every boy, girl, woman, and a man.
It's hooker, the rhythm. It's a hooker influence. Yeah, that's different. Da, 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 the one two, three. I know what you mean. I, I do know what you mean. Some of them guys play triplets with an evenness of feeling. Uh, but anyway, whether it's triple or duple, whichever it is, it ain't Henry's way. Henry's way at all periods 
has been to play all around the time. And that little is just has a, a metronomic feeling foreign to the lead part. But it's one thing. If you get it, you know, part of it, if you get it a whole creative of the Maybe. Maybe, maybe we could try it. See, that's, that's one of the things. That, that uh, hitting the bottom strings of the guitar gets lost in the Fender bass. Of course, that's not insoluble. That, that doesn't have to be a problem. No, see, in Bullfrog, the solidity of the guitar is on the, uh, third, uh, is on the third and fourth string. Yeah. Where in, in this stuff, the sixth string is a lot of the solidity and it gets hung up with the bass. These are the problems I'm talking about. Yeah. It's possible, but it would have to be changed. Just playing it straight through the way Lloyd like Houston would do it, even with a different right hand, that wouldn't that wouldn't do it. It's it's got to be changed. Everybody got to make a change sometime. Me too. Me too. At this thing, yeah. these rehearsals. Um, well, there's a one chord sudden white song that I want to try. Yeah. Uh, it, it's weird. You wouldn't. It has nothing to do with the original. It's uh, this, the, it's, it's called Morning Blues by Daniel uh, uh, Okay. Make it. Make it. Well, anyway, uh, Barry Melton of the Fish was sitting around at Spiros in Boston playing an arrangement he made of it. And he didn't want to do it with the band. It falls a thumb roll. And it's in one chord, and it would suit the band, I think. It would be a poss possible first thumb roll thing. And it would be, it would be a, a new way to fly, because it's a Southern White song. It's 16 measures long. So I think I think we're going to try that one. Well, that's the same stuff as the skip stuff. Uh, that's definitely a scene where no one song would be taken. Like, I, I've been trying to figure out a way to combine Cherry Ball in the treble and, and Cypress Grove in the bass and run both songs at the same time. Yeah. Or alternate the licks of those two songs, because they do qualify the 12 measure thing. Yeah. The, the 12 measures, so they make it by that hurdle. And then I'd like maybe put the other, a whole uh, symposium to skip James guitar licks and things. But it wouldn't be just one song played straight out. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, I'll Change is sometimes beneficial in the uh, arrangement by the producer, in this case Cal Carter. Think of the old DJ cat, because we, we, that song originally, the background, have you ever heard an Elmore James record on Sphere or Fire called Must Have Done Somebody Wrong? The rhythm is So anyway, I was fiddling around with this new tuning, this D7 or E7 tuning, and so we wanted to put one on, and that was going to be it. We recorded it on tape once. It sounded like it might make it. When we got in the studio, it was just a catastrophe. So, uh, Sunnyland was in on that song. Uh, Cal came out, he changed the drum part. He, he suggested the Jimmy Reed part. All that stuff, he created the whole arrangement. He even suggested that one of the lines be repeated twice, because it was a strong line. And it was, and it worked out. So, Calvin Carter... It's given some kudos for that one. None of this is uh, usable. Yeah.